What is going on, Evan Nation? John Pepe here with Howard Bender. Welcome into the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS Game Day Playbook Preview Show. We are taking a look at the Wednesday 7 game, 7 p.m. main slate here. We've got a little night main slate on a Wednesday, Howard. We've had uh, early afternoons the last couple of weeks here, but uh, we got a, a night one here, seven games. Some good pitching on this slate for us to uh, – take advantage of at least at the top <laughs> i was just gonna say i was like all right you said some good pitching i was like to target against <laughs> well that's true for sure uh a couple of pitches i think we'll, we know that we're gonna go into we'll just kind of jump into it and uh, i appreciate all of you who are tuning in and if you can go ahead and just hit that thumbs up button hit that like button it is a free way to support the work we do here on the fantasy alarm youtube channel if you haven't already hit that subscribe button uh, do that as well. We do a preview show every night, every morning. Uh, and then we go live at 4 p.m. Eastern time when there are night slates uh, to help you guys get ready for the day's action here. Uh, Howard, like I mentioned, we have we do have some good pitching. We have Joe Ryan at home against Chicago. And we got Reynaldo Lopez against Miami, who we thought we had a couple of days ago. But then they pushed him back. They started Bryce Elder and then Max Fried. And now we're back to Reynaldo Lopez here um, at $9,200. I like them both. I think both are in great spots. I would play both. I would stack both perfectly fine if those are the two guys I build lineups around today. Uh, I completely agree with you. Those are my two favorite pitchers on the slate as well. Let me throw a little wrinkle in there for sure. you. Because, you know, listen, yes, Joe Ryan against the White Sox, always, you know, great. Garrett Crochet against the Twins. You look at the Twins and what they've done against uh, against left-handed pitching. It's terrible. They got this lineup is loaded with a lot of southpaws, yeah. and and I think that you know because I, I think Crochet gives you the strikeout upside um, as well, maybe a little bit better strikeout upside uh, considering what the Twins are doing against lefties. Then you know if so if you wanted to save a couple of bucks off of those top two guys. I think he's got a better strikeout rate than Ronaldo Lopez. Sure. Um, but again, you know, cash cash games, yes, you use you can use uh, Joe Ryan and Gret Garrett Crochet. But if you're looking for GPP and you don't want to, you know, you want to sw- spend down a little bit for one of them, I think Crochet's in play here. Okay. Yeah. Listen, I, and I, Crochet probably keeps some ownership down because he's given up 12 runs over his last two starts. Did have 10 strikeouts in that game against Cincinnati, but Cincinnati and Philadelphia offense compared to Minnesota offense, there's obviously a drop off there. Um, you know, Eric Fed doing a, a pretty good job today against the Minnesota offense as well. We don't think there's much, we don't think much of him. Um, you know, so I, I do agree with you that there's uh, some nice um, strikeout upside there. Also, a potential strikeout upside just below him, John Gray. Uh, does have a nine That's and seven strikeout game on his ledger, and he gets Seattle here. Uh, he's pitched pretty good. You know, last couple of starts here. Um, obviously, the Atlanta one only an inning two thirds in relief because they were down in their bullpen, Howard. So it was his side session day. So they said, eh, you know what? Why don't you go pitch relief against the Atlanta Braves? Four strikeouts <laughs> in an inning two thirds. So uh, John Gray looks ready to go here against Seattle. As somebody who has John Gray in a couple of uh, industry leagues, yeah, that made me so nervous. I was freaking out when they put him in because I was actually uh, I was talking to a uh, to a diehard Braves fan like as that game was going on, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm about to get slaughtered here!" But yeah. it didn't happen that way. Yeah, so he ended up four strikeouts in an inning and two thirds, so he's ready to go. Uh, you can go down from him if you're not in on Crochet. Um, after that, I don't, I don't really know. Uh, you know, we, we have targeted a lot of Colorado, uh, San Diego pitchers against Colorado. You got the knuckleball or Matt Waldron. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what your thoughts are there. He had a couple of good starts, got hammered by Toronto. Does a knuckleball dance in cores here? Howard? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what the air does to the movement on the pitch. I really don't actually. I haven't you know, kind of dived into that. It's not a strong lineup for Colorado is really what it comes down to. So, I mean, if you wanted to possibly, you know, throw a little, uh, you know, like if you're for a, a tournament play, yeah. maybe, but I don't, I just, I don't particularly love it. There's really, you know, there's not a whole lot of desire to, to pay all the way down to, uh, to, to Waldron there. Okay. Do you have anybody else on this slate? Would you go to Clark Schmidt against Oakland? Here? Oh, like I think that's a sucker play right there. Clark okay. Schmidt looks terrible right now. Okay. 
Uh, back to back good starts. What do you mean? Five and a third inning, seven strikeouts in those two starts there. Uh, but one five whip, obviously not great. Uh, Oakland uh, put up a couple of runs this evening on Stroman. So, uh, all right, let's go to catcher. Well, Oakland, we'll- Oakland, by the way, embarrassing my Yankees. Embarrassing by by putting up hits and stuff. The Yankees might be winning the game. Yeah, but you know they they should be. I mean, they should be blanking the A's. The A's are a terrible team. Agreed. And yet people are letting them win games. It blows me away. All right, catcher position as always. We try to find the cheapest play, but you do have. Once again, for the third straight day in course, Luis Cambisano is just $3,900 and he gets a lefty. So yeah. um, that's been a, a go to of ours uh, in lineups here. So certainly don't mind just plugging and moving from the, from there. Yeah, no, I think that that's a, a, a perfectly fine play. And it's, you know, it, it's not like that's the thing. And, and the good thing, at least, is that the price of a catcher at 39 it, to me is not outlandish. Like if, sure. if Camposano was like, you know, up there where like Elias Diaz is at 43. I, I just can't do it. Save me the money here. Agreed. Uh, we're going to wait down the list. Any obvious spots for us? Not really. We'll have to see what the starting lineups look like here. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing. There's no obvious play at catcher. Uh, no obvious spend down. There's no, I mean, again, pitchers that that we that I do like targeting against, you know, I'll yeah. I'll target against, uh, you know, and and, and if, so if I'm looking at catchers, uh, I'm gonna see who's behind the plate for for the Astros against Tyone. Um, yeah. I'm gonna see who's behind the plate for the, you know, I mean, it should be Sal Perez, but maybe they uh, they turn around, and they throw somebody else in there against sure. Rodriguez. Um, Yankees catcher, you could go either Trevino or Austin Wells. Um, yep. I don't Wells think caught, I... Wells caught on uh, Tuesday, so there's a chance Trevino will be behind the plate here. Okay, so you know those guys are are, are decent spend downs as well. Um, but yeah, that's probably about it. I mean, yeah, yeah you if you just... weren't in on crochet, I mean, like Kristen Vasquez is 2500. Yeah, if you're not in on crochet, sure, sure, uh, sure. All right. First base, a little bit more fun to talk about here. Olsen versus Tyler uh, at $5,900. I feel Atlanta could be a popular play. Uh, Pascantino's $4,800. Your guy at Bush against Eric Getty at $4,500. Uh, Turner hitting cleanup against Alec Marsh at $42. Uh, sad day for me, Howard. Uh, uh, you know, I almost sent you the, uh, the the news blurb about Garrett Cooper. I'm sorry, kid. I'm sorry. Uh, got DFA here. Um, <laughs> Matt Mervis getting the call up to replace but, the lineup. But how about this? To the point now. Let me let me help you out with uh, with a little bit of uh, something there, because with Garrett Cooper getting DFA, and I also thought about this for for Jared Walsh. Your Red Sox you need a first baseman. Yes. Wouldn't it be the best thing in the world? Is wait, Dahlbeck is a is a righty? He is. All right. So you could bring in Jared Walsh to to do that, or you say forget the platoon. Let's just bring in Garrett Cooper, and let him just play first base for the Sox. I mean, you know, as a right handed power bat, uh, I've seen. I worse. would love anybody but Bobby Dahlbeck to get everyday first base time here, but the team <laughs> reportedly says that he's going to get the majority of the starts. Ugh. Now, May 1st is the opt-out date for veterans who aren't on a major league roster. So there is obviously some speculation that they're just going to wait till May 1st to see who's out there before they land on their decision of whom to bring in. You know, I um, saw something very similar in the Fantasy Alarm stock watch today. Yeah. You should go check that out on the Fantasy Alarm YouTube page that you're currently on. Um, <laughs> speaking of, uh, of Tristan Casas, uh, broken rib on a swing. How does that happen? How do you break your rib on us? How how powerful are you torquing your body that you're breaking a rib uh, on a swing there? Dude, so. I cracked two ribs coughing once. <laughs> Anyways, he's expected to miss a lot of time, which is unfortunate. Uh, one, I have Costas in a lot of best ball leagues. Two, uh, Red Sox fan. Three, he was going to have a breakout season. So, um, Anyways, back to guys that are playing on this slate. Uh, Nathaniel Lowe took Jared Walsh's spot. He's 3,800, pretty cheap top of the order bat for Texas there against Bryce Miller. I know Bryce Miller has talent, um, but you know, so do the Rangers line up there. Rizzo Homer tonight, if you're not in on Joe Boyle, uh, right? That matchup at $3,700. Hi, France, if you're not in on John Gray either, you know, sure, sure. 
Ty France could be a a, a, a fine pay down as well. I, you know, I mean, again, we keep talking about this on the show. Like, I, I don't think either one of us really likes paying down at first base. Not usually. No, I usually give my nod to Lamonte Wade and I move on. But he's not on the slate, so I can't can't give him a shot. Although, uh, how about Ryan Noda against Clark, Clark Schmidt? Schmidt? Yeah. I mean, Oakland could be interesting. Noda's 28, yeah. Uh, and he's a lefty bat. Maybe. 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 Second base, Tyon goes up against Houston in this one. So we got Altuve 55, yeah. Semyon Miller 53. Xander still 5K is in 5K this entire series. Um, he's got block there. I, you know, he's been good. Uh, Coors Field, I don't know. Not no, really. I th- listen, I, th- I think Bogarts, I mean, listen, is he tearing it up for everybody right now? No, he's not tearing it up, but he has been hitting better. The, you know, he's been seeing the ball a little bit better lately. Against Ty Block, I think that there's 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 something uh, to be had there. Um, again, another guy who we talked about, I think on the uh, on the preview show, you asked me about Nico Horner, uh, that he's starting to wake up a little bit. Uh, you know, again, Cubs bats against Araghetti. Cubs, I, I believe, right now are up like five nothing. Yeah, uh, five five nothing. Tuckman's got a homer. Bellinger's got a homer. Uh, Nico Horner, unfortunately, is zero for two today. So. <sighs> John, you're like, you know, you're like Mr. Gloom and Doom. I'm not trying to wet blanket you here, Howard. I'm just you being, are. I'm reading the box score here. You're wet blanketing me right now. Uh, but there's a chance still, Nico Horner. I do like him at 42 against Aaron Getty there. Okay. Uh, Cabin Bichos, the- 31. Yeah. I think I think you're you're oblig- you're you're obliged to be mentioning Calvin Biggio. I think at every show. Well, I mean, he's been fine. He's cheap. Three <laughs> K. He's gonna hit the middle of the lineup. It's Alec Marsh. So uh, I got nothing else down here, though. I got nothing else down there either. How about we go to third base then? Third base, we go. Where do you want to go? Where do I want to go? I mean, listen, I could go Riley against Tyler. That's gonna probably be a, a little bit of a, a no brainer. Sure. Uh, not interested in Ryan McMahon at that kind of a price and going up against the knuckleballer. We'll kind of have to wait and see. Uh, Michael Garcia obviously has a little bit of interest here, uh, going up against Rodriguez. I don't think Yariel Rodriguez is, uh, is all that intimidating. Um, Bregman just can't get it going. I I'll, I'll, I'll defer down to Chris Morrell being a guy who, who would definitely interest me against Araghetti. Sure. But that's probably it for that like mid tier range there. I don't even. Wow. Yeah, got Oswaldo you... Cabrera against Boyle, thirty-eight. Yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, Josh Smith, thirty-two against Miller. Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, Josh Josh Rojas if he's in the lineup. <laughs> right, there's not a lot really uh, hanging out down there as far as uh, you know the values, the value infielders. We just don't get the value up. Oh, there's Danny Mendick. I mean, sometimes. Yeah. Means I have to scroll back up again. Uh, it's time to switch the position when he scrolled down to Denny Mendeck. I think he decided yesterday. Uh, all right, shortstop has Bobby Witt, Corey Seager, your top two guys here. Yes, and yes, yeah, and Volpe. Yep, Volpe forty-eight against Boyle. That plays mm-hmm. Tovar against Waldron. Again, if you're not in on Waldron, you think the knuckleball, you know, cause you know maybe brings it's Colorado flat. to life. I guess you could go there. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I would see him. like I'm not going to go with a guy like Tovar who I don't necessarily know or trust just because he's in cores over the fact that he's more expensive than Boba Shett. I'd rather use Boba Shett. Sure. Well, Tovar is just like one of the two Rockies actually hitting the baseball. He's hitting 300 and 820 OPS on the year. So it's also kind of helping himself. Hasian Kim isn't really hitting all that well, but it is a lefty matchup for him historically. Bank rate split. You're not wrong. Boba Shett the other day had the RBI triple. Um, you know, again, the batting average can OPS could be better for him, but coming alive a little bit. Um, let's see. There ain't Pena. nothing down here. This is garbage. Yeah, Pena's down here. Really this tough. Castro. This is a tough slate. Like, this is a slate where, like, you, you, you kind of sit there and you wonder, it's like, where am I going to find my value in order outfield. to get these top pitchers <laughs> out there? Because we don't want to pay down for pitching. Yeah, it's going to have to be outfield. You're going to have to probably find a few value outfielders. Um, Obviously, Acuna Soto, the whole crew's up at top, so you can pick your stack and build around, as we always say. Uh, Bellinger homered tonight. You got him against Iron Getty at 48. Uh, Michael Harris will be back hitting second. He's 46. 
Um, MJ Melendez is 45 against Rodriguez. I mean, those are all fine plays. Yeah, I think those are, are, are solid plays as well. Yeah, I would definitely like hunt in that range if, uh, you know, if we're, but we, I mean, yeah, we got to find value. I Profar get... 4K against Block. That's a good one. Who? Profar. Oh, Jerickson. Yeah, 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 sure. Gives you that, uh, gives you that course field exposure um, as well. Yeah, it's the right side of his split two E. It's lefty, it's better. Um, let's see here. Var show against Marsh, dude. Uh, our guy Henry Wilson the other day, uh, big on Var show in the playbook, called him out on the show, said he was his favorite play. He was even his home run call on the show, and he hit it. He hit the home run, so gotta love it. Uh, gotta got love Marsh, it. Marsh at $3,500 there. Uh, uh, Talkman, like you said, went yard today. I'm yeah. sure Ren Renfro could be in play here as well, going up against Rodriguez. Sure. Um, Lede, if you're not in on Schmidt, 32. Kalnick and Tyler will be in the lineup over Duvall. Yeah. He's 3,200 as well. Um, let's see. Any there is not a lot of good stuff down here <laughs> either. How how low can you go? I mean, yeah. this is this we is are bad. we are scrolling. Um, this is bad. Trevor Larnack. Oh I mean, no, he's, not he's against a lefty. the lefty. Yeah, he's a lefty. I was just gonna say, not against the lefty. Damn. There better be something in the lineups tomorrow for some uh, some some deep plays here. <laughs> There's not Lawrence Butler homer tonight. Maybe he goes yard against uh, Schmidt. <laughs> uh, all right, I, let's let's do our best here. Oh, I don't want to build a lineup now, man. I just want to go home. Build our lineups. Uh, we ran on Ryan. I guess we probably need to find. We didn't have a value. You go. You like crochet, so I guess crochet. But uh, then we have two pitchers going against each other. Yeah, that's the say. That's what I'm saying. We could go Lopez and crochet but, uh, instead of Ryan and crochet. But if you want to lock into to Ryan, I guess we do gray. We could do gray. Um, yeah, that's probably the only guy we're gonna use. All right, then we gotta find some something to spend down. Where is your uh where is your Trevino? Where is he at? Right there, Boyle, twenty eight hundred. Sure, we'll plug that. There you go. Um I mean we weren't spending down at first base. Did we have a second baseman we wanted to spend? I don't think we had a, a value second baseman at all. I think it's gotta be Kyba Biggio. All right. I mean, plug them in if you're gonna if you're gonna do that. Let's look at uh, let's look at shortstop and see. Well, actually, go to third. Go to third first. Go to third because I think we weren't spending top top dollar at third. We're not gonna go with uh, with Austin Riley. We were looking a little bit further down. Chris Morell, I think, is uh, yeah. would is, you is, him or him or Cabrera? Um, yeah, I'd rather go Morell than Cabrera. Okay. Uh, first base then. Uh, Matty Olsen hits dingers. Yeah, we'll have to probably just one off Olsen then. Shortstop, you know, there's nothing down here. It's so gross. Oh, who's going to bat second if in front of Olsen? Is it going to be it, Harris or is yeah, it going to be? No, it's going to be Harris with a, right, with a righty on the mound. That's 35. All right, what do we have down uh, here? That's not terrible. All right, keep going. Let's go. Yeah. Just wrap around Kelnick, I guess. We'll hit ninth. Nah. Eh. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, Bar 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 Varsha's 35. We can get Varsha. There you go. There you go. Get a little Varsha in there. Uh, mm -hmm. What does that leave us now? 35.55 for uh, 35, yeah, 50 for a shortstop and an outfielder. Jesus. Let's look down. Who's the cheaper shortstop that we can get? I mean, Willie uh, Castro. I, uh, you know what? You know, that, that lineup that you and I built on yesterday's preview show, I yeah. actually I played it for the most part in uh, in, uh, in in the Tout Daily lineup uh, that I used today. I also I, I liked it so much that I ended up uh, uh, throwing it into a single entry contest as well. And it was what we did. The Kowser Mullins. Yeah. Uh, Michael Bush, Cody Bellinger, Chris Morrell. Yeah, yeah. So I went with uh, I went with that lineup, and uh, well, you got yeah. the early Bellinger homer, so that's working for you. But yeah, instead of going with Mason Wynn, I ended up like you know using some of that six hundred we had left over, and I paid up for Willie Castro only because you know that that lefty lineup. You know, you know he's a switch hitter, so I figured okay, let me get that lefty bat uh, in there against um, Eric Fetty, but it yeah. didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, it just, just hasn't hit well. yet. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. We got 4,300 in for an outfielder plugging in Castro here. So, because uh, he has, you know, full five game hit streak going, which means um, you could go Doyle if you don't want to just a one off. Uh, or actually, we had Profar down here against uh, Black as well. Springer, we can just continue with Toronto bats. We got Biggio and Varsho in. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Do we, do we want that Toronto stack? I mean, it's a, something. It's, you know, it's, I mean, it's against Alec Marsh, and it's you know, yeah, it's not like it's terrible. No, no, no. Listen, right-handed batters against Alec Marsh are, are posted like a 400 woba. Yeah. So yeah. I'm okay well, with that. Well, let's see if Springer can get off the horse here. All right. So that gives us Ryan Gray at pitching. Trevino, the one-off, uh, uh, not one-off. We have a Olsen Harris stack, which is pretty dominant. Uh, Biggio, Morel, Castro, Harris, Varsho, Springer. So. Uh, example lineup for everybody. Our guy, Henry Wilson, who we talked about on fire with his playbooks. He'll have the playbook for everybody here on this one. Do you need to see the, the example lineup again, Howard? Good. What's that? I thought you were leaning in to see the example lineup again. I said, you Oh no, no, no. You know what? It's so funny. I was actually, I was, I was, you know, I was, I was box score surfing for a moment there for That's tonight's fine. games. Uh, and I was like, wait, does Dane Dunning already have five strikeouts through two innings? Does he? And, and he does, dude. I mean, we were all in on some Dane Dunning on the show. So Seattle, well, he's given up two runs. Yeah, but the strikeouts at sixty six hundred dollars like paid for that off. So yeah, uh, Seattle, Seattleing, get that Ooh. John Gray move. <laughs> Got a little uh, Cal Rally Homer. Shout out to uh, one of our members of the of the live stream show. Uh, we were talking catchers. He says he liked Big Dumper tonight. So that's Cal Rally. We got, we got I that like going it. for him. Um, all right, so if you haven't already hit the like button, do so. If you haven't already subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for there either. Henry and I will be back live 4 p.m. Eastern time to break down his playbook and all the updated news and notes for this seven-game main slate. Till then, everybody, good luck with your draft preparation, and we'll catch you later.